first of all, all of that was true, that story. I had all my herbal lifers drinking 40 cases of herb a month. All right. So I'll tell you kind of the, the brief story of myself. Uh, first off, Anthony Palm, originally from Seattle, Washington, and um, born and raised, started at 19 years old in direct sales. So if you're young, I'm the original YPR, I'm the OG of YPR, actually, okay? That's my nickname. But when something happened to me, if you heard my story at convention, um, I was interning at a company called Baxter Healthcare for medical supplies and pharmaceuticals. Um, they were pretty much running us like 10, 12 hours a day. I was going to college, I was working at night there, interning during the day. It was just like 14, 15 hours a day of just go, go, go. And I looked 20 years my senior, everybody was on coke, <coughs> divorced 10 times, and made 200,000 a year. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, that's not what I want. Then, the second thing I saw was this gentleman who had been there since 15 years old. They had just let him go, and I caught him at like 7.30 at night. He's a senior executive vice president. They let him go at the age of 63 years old. And right before his retirement, um, this guy was bawling on his desk, and I busted his door down to help him. I asked him what was wrong. He said, look, I can't even work two jobs now to equal what I make in one. I'm going to lose everything. And at 19 years old, they went from 19 to 40, in five seconds. Because I knew this got to be, it's up to me. I just had no money. I had a credit score of 473. I had a car, you're gonna see, that had 200,000 miles on it. But I had desire fire. I knew that I had to find something, and I just didn't know what it was. So fast forward five months, I got a phone call. A friend of mine said, come down to this meeting. I was naive and young, so I said, sure. <laughs> um, and so I went down there and there was 500 people that were jumping around and screaming and yelling and there's one-eyed pirates walking across the stage saying they made 50000 a month. And I went, <laughs> I can do it too. <laughs> okay, so then from there, um, I just, you know, I'm serious. I went to, in high school, I was a, a basketball athlete, went to college on basketball, so the whole fundamentals of follow through, discipline, do extra, get there early, leave late, that was, that was ingrained in me from a little boy. So those work habits is just kind of part of what I took to my business life. And when I got with my mentor, he said, let's make a 90-day plan. First 30, then 60, then 90. And so I put that down, and the first thing he said to me is, is that you're going to work a lot in the beginning, and you're going to make a little. So don't let, the, don't let that distraction hit you upside your head. You're going to work your tail off, and you're not going to see much in the beginning. Then in the back end, you're going to work a little and make a lot. And I said, well, wait a minute. What if I continue to work a lot? Because I'm young. I don't want to just sit down. I mean, golf courses and things like that really don't interest me. Um, and here's the thing I noticed. I went to work. Okay, now 19, you're usually drinking, chasing girls, and doing things you shouldn't be doing. I was sitting down on the phone until 10 or 11 o'clock at night making phone calls and doing meetings. All my friends were making fun of me, every single one of them. Okay? And the thing that was interesting to me is that by the time I was, uh, my, by the end of my first year, I was at seven to 10,000 a month. And then the end of my second year, I was at 22,000 a month. And by the time I was 26 years old, I had millions and millions and millions of dollars in the bank. Financially retired forever. Now I'm 42, I haven't had to work a day for a dollar in all these years. And so, you know, my goals change. Your goals are going to change from your first 30, 60, 90 days. But here's the deal. You know, when I was in Herbalife, we were at 110 million when I got in in 1991. Does that sound a little familiar? Mm -hmm. 100 million last year, 118 million? We had a wonder product called Green and Beige. It took one beige and three green in 20 minutes. People hunted you down and wanted more. We went from 100 million to a billion in 36 months. We made a fortune. Okay? Fortune. And um, I made my financial fortune in that 100 million to billion dollar run. Helped 100 people become millionaires right alongside of me in the 90s. And we just crushed it. <laughs> so, now, thank you. That was because of one thing. I followed my mentor. Mm. So write that down. That wealth leaves clues. Follow your mentor. Okay? If I was so smart, I would have already been rich, right? I wasn't rich. I had to follow somebody who had already made it. 
So I held my mentor's bags unconditionally. I yielded to him on a business level. So sometimes as when we're young or older, it doesn't matter. We don't want to really follow somebody. We think we know everything, but we have no money in the bank. I didn't get in that club. I just carried my mentor's bags. He said, be there at 7. I was there at 7. He said, stand here and hold this. I stood there and hold that. <laughs> you know why? I knew wealth building secrets would eventually rub off on me. Mm. That make sense? Yeah. The things they do, the things that how they walk, how they behave, where they go, what they do, it will rub off <laughs> on me. So fast forwarding, um, it, it was just an incredible ride at Herbalife. You know, we hit $1 billion. The president founder was kind of like a BK, started from the ground on, on the street, handing out Dixie cups of shave, got his teeth kicked out, and then made it to a billion as a big team. When we lost him. He died at the age of 44 years old, and it was though time had stopped. All the things we worked for, all the things we were going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, bell to bell for, it was like time stopped. But the one thing we didn't lose was the leadership that he engraved in us. See? So it's really important as you're building an organization that you're learning the leadership skills to not only get a check, but to keep a check. Mm -hmm. And that leadership <laughs> skills that we learned took us to two billion, three billion, four billion, five billion, and then when I left in December or January third of this year, we hit crossed over six billion dollars. <throat> now people go, you're crazy. Why, as a number one earner? Did you lead that company? You had everything made for you. There's one reason. Mark died. Wall Street Warriors moved in. It was the distributors against the company, and it wasn't fun anymore. And I knew by drinking that verb, I knew going, this is the next big thing. This is yeah. the hundred million. Yeah. The million dollars. You know when you know it, you know, you know, you know? Mm. And you really know? It's kind of like when you saw <laughs> Apple. You knew it was going to get big. I knew Microsoft was going to go cuckoo because I lived in Seattle. I saw the cranes building building after building after building. This is the next big thing, you guys. I had 30 companies fly me in, offer me one, offer me $25 million to come. I said, I'm not for sale. I took no spot. I took no money. I took nothing, not even a deal to come here. Mm. I took a huge pay cut, $400,000 a month pay cut to come here. Mm. <clears throat> okay. I'm here because of one reason. This thing's going to go to a billion overnight. And the people that hang around the light pole part-time are going to make fire your boss money. Mm. The people that go to work are going to create a fortune where you're never going to have to work a day ever. And if you're those type of people that are here in the room, you got to understand, it's not about me or it's not about Matt. you got to wake up in the morning and look at the mirror yourself. You've got to get your own integrity in alignment. You've got to get your own work ethic ready to roll. I'm not here to be number two, by the way. Huh. So Tom better get his game on. Right? <laughs> okay. That's good. Right? I don't need to be number one. But if I go after it, everyone else is going for it too, right? Yeah. That's the whole point of going for it. So I'm here to help the company get to the next level. And that's why there's those of you, let me see YPR, raise your hands. Okay. Don't let your friends sell you out. Don't be the people that you're because your friends are broke. You got to go be broke with them. You're going to hit a rough spot in six months where you think it's not working. Remember this time right now where I'm telling you, go sit in my Rolls Royce out front and smell the seats. It works. <laughs> okay, it works. It does. So don't let the bump in the road get you. Because I quit a hundred times and I look in the want ads and I'm like, oh, write this down. When you get your paycheck, and this is one of my mentors taught me this, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to remember this forever. When you receive your paycheck from your employer, here's what that means when you grab it. Thank you, this is all I'm worth. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel? Are you worth more? Yes. Do something about it. Mm. Do something about it. I got some mindset stuff here we're going to go over. I'm supposed to rock and roll, but I just want to say thank you. I mean, coming over to Vima has been amazing, the, the kudos and all that. I don't need kudos. I'm here as a team member. I'll hold the door. I'll make the verb. I'll pour whatever i got to pour. I'm here to help the company get to a billion. And I just want to say to all of you, thank you so much. But really, at the end of the day, I'm a validation that it works. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to lock arms. We're going to go country to country. 
we're going to take it to a billion. But listen, the first billion is the hardest thing. It's just like making your first million. My mentor said to me, AP, the hardest thing you're ever going to do is make your first million. Then the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is easy. It was the hardest thing I ever did was make my first million bucks. But I'll tell you a secret. I just told this to my little YPR guy back in the back. And boy, is it rough on him. I'm rough on him. But listen, I didn't have a mansion when I made my first million. I lived in a two-bedroom apartment, but I had 1.2 million cash in the bank. You guys understand that? <clears throat> cash is king. So you don't want to be the people that overextend yourselves. Now raise the bar. I rolled in a Benzo, okay? I was good <laughs> driving down the street, but I didn't spend every dime I got. Second thing, pay your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with this this administration. Pay your taxes. Okay? Third thing is is increase your lifestyle. The little itty bitties around you because it's the little things you increase, people start watching you. They watch you. They go, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And when obviously your income gets bigger, then you can start doing little things like, you know, that's when I bought my, my first big homes and my boats and you'll see all this fun, you know, stuff. It didn't happen overnight for me. I did little bitty steps. Matter of fact, I had the S the S class Mercedes on my dream board so many times the body style changed three times. Huh. Okay? But then I got it. Right? So think about your 30, think about your 60, think about your 90. You know, I'm more excited. You know, I got um, I just got my third spot. I've been I got my mom's spot, I call it my third spot. But I just pumped and, and I've been building it for three months, four months now. I started really building it for three months. I hit presidential again in three months. I was so excited about it. And I'm more excited about that than hitting Star Royal in that presidential. <laughs> here we go. Let's talk about some things here. Let's see if we can get this going. Is this the middle one? No, no, it's uh, the one on the right. Alright. The clicker doesn't work so great. That's okay. Here we go. Oh. Alright, this is where I started from. You guys with me? Yeah. 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 All right. <clears throat> I do throw verbs at people and they start falling asleep. So yeah. All right. So here's where I started from. Top right corner is the bedroom window I was in. This was my 200,000 mile roller. <laughs> and imagine though, if I pulled up to Starbucks and started pitching you, or if we went to a hotel meeting, I parked up front and I said, hey, we're going to get rich. You'd probably say, good luck to you. Uh, right? That's so why you can't ever discount somebody. You can't ever look at someone on the outside and go, oh, they're never going to make it. Because you never know what's going on inside of them. Mm. You never know. It doesn't matter the color of their skin, their religion, where they come from, their economics. And the interesting thing, I've flown around this world so many times, everyone has the same dreams and goals. It's so interesting. Today, I can't, you know, I live in a really beautiful, I can't see it through here, but... Living a really beautiful home, selling that. It's for sale right now. I'm selling that, and I'm getting a really big house down in um, PV. I'm having it built right now. It's this. Um, you guys know about? Have you seen the homes in Miami, and South Beach? It's enormous, a big white. They're all getting sharp edges. So I'm getting to this big Maya South Beach kind of um, house built, <clears throat> and the backyard is going to be cool. I want all my distributors to come, or brand partners now, to come to my home. So I'm putting a 50-person theater on one side. So I don't have to go to hotel rooms anymore. Then in the very back, I'm doing a volcano like the Mirage. So the volcano erupts, and then I'm having a pool house, and then a guest house. So, you know, you never, you know, that's on the dream board forever. So I'm now doing it. It's going to be on two acres. And uh, then I don't have to, then I'm going to have the big FU gates in the front. <laughs> so anyways. It's fun. Well, a little different from that. Uh, so inside, beautiful. But here's the cars I've been on to replace. This the one that's in the top right, out front right now. Um, but again, put down your dream board. What do you want? I put these up here. I had, I had a dream board. I wanted a car collection, right? I had one, and he goes, "I want a fifteen thousand dollar knitting machine." Great, put it down. <laughs> Whatever you want, put it on your dream board. Okay, things can things can change. This was last month. I went to. Uh, I did a little European tour to go get all my herbal lifers in Europe about in. I went over to Big Ben. Uh, this is in front of the uh, uh, this is in front of the uh, the castle of it. Well, not the castle, the Buckingham Palace. And this is over here in Paris. This is an, an Abbey. 
beautiful. They weren't supposed to take pictures there, but I did anyways. Uh, when you're an entrepreneur, you ask for forgiveness, not permission. Uh -huh. And at the very top was this house I rented in Punta Mita, Mexico. It had its own private beach. Uh, it was just, you know, those are the kinds of things you can do when you travel around the world. You know, as far as I could go when we were growing up was we went camping. Had a ton of love in my family, but I watched my single mom try to raise us and the struggle of everything she went through to put food on the table. I had size 13 shoe in sixth grade. I mean, the poor lady just struggled every single day to put food and clothes on the table. So I've been you know, flying her around with me. And then the Jets were something that, that's how I met BK. We became partners in Jets together. So he came over to my office one day and he said, hey, if you were me, what would you do? I said, to be quite honest with you, you're missing some one of the biggest parts of the entire network marketing. That's the weight loss division. And so he said, hey, by the way, why don't you come down and become a partner in these Jets? And so we did. And then um, this was Robert Kiyosaki and his wife. And we went to the San Diego Verve thing together. So I was flying over there. And I said, hey, come with me. So it was fun getting able to uh, sit with Robert Kiyosaki and his wife. is like completely dynamic, Kim. So, you know, these are things that you can have on your dream board. Now, a lot of these things are on my dream board for years and years and years and years. Right? Some of them were on for 30, 60, 90. You know, in the beginning, I wanted to get into a new apartment from an old apartment. Then it was to buy a town home. You know what I'm saying? Take little bitty steps along the way. Mm. So I'm going to run through some of the things that you need to have in order to really get your business rocking. The first is to have a successful business. You've got to change your mindset from an employee to a business owner. Yeah, you've got to get there early and you've got to leave late. I know, I know it's kind of funny, a lot of the white PR is the joke, and I don't really think it's a joke, because I go, PK, where's the white PR? Oh, they don't get started till midnight, I mean, till, till noon. Uh, I don't understand that. I was 19, I was up early, I went to bed late. Right? That doesn't make sense to me. Guys, you've got to get your game on. You've got to get in alignment with where you're going. Okay? You're not bums anymore. You guys are business owners. You guys that are OPRs. You guys are working your jobs all day long. I understand. I used to come home at night and work from like 7 o'clock at night till midnight, fall asleep on my computer because I was so tired. Get up at 5 o'clock and do it again. But you know what? It's worth it. So secondly, daily disciplines of duplicating your mentor and the system lead to repetition over the mother of all skills. You've got to do it over and over and over again. Right? My white PR crew back here, I looked at they, they were like sitting in my office and what are you doing sitting here in my office? Oh, uh, we're looking at YouTube videos. Look, if you're not talking to 10 people a day, get out of my office. Mm. Yeah. Right? You don't have time to sit here and look at YouTube videos. You've got to present because the first person you talk to, you're scared to death and you're sweating and, you're, and your knees hurt. The second person, you're a little bit better, but you're still scared to death. By the 10th person, you've got swag, you're pitching, you're closing, everything's great. Yes. Maybe right. it's the 20th person. <laughs> but if you don't get the numbers under your belt, you're not going to get it. So that's why you've got to follow your mentor. Follow your mentor. Next, your mentor will match you effort for effort. That's right. One of, um, one of Alex Morton's guys was in my office, and I go, you know, if I was you, to be honest with you, why are you not following Alex? Like, I would be, I'd be holding Alex's bag. Like, mm. I wouldn't let him out of my sight. Mm -hmm. He would think I was a chick almost. <laughs> it's not close up beating him, except not that close. <laughs> but do you understand that does? That imprints you. It imprints you. I don't care what I have to do, how I got to do it. If I know where I'm going, I'm going to do whatever it takes, right? Don't you, want, don't you want to change? Of course you do. Next. Pay the price of discipline or pay the price of regret. But either way, you got to pay. Jim Rohn was a personal friend of mine. We put about 2 million miles on airplanes together. He constantly, as a young, when I was in my 20s, he constantly was saying this to me. Do you guys know when you go to Walmart and you have the older person handing you the cart? You know why they're handing you a cart? It's because they're broke. They're not handing you a cart because they're bored. They're bored to be in a golf course or a cruise. They're handing you a cart because they paid the price of regret. They're broke. It's sad. People say they're 50, they go, oh, I'll wait 10 more years. Oh, I still got time. And all of a sudden, welcome to Walmart or mm. your Home Depot or wherever. <clears throat> you don't need to live like that, people. You need to take individual responsibility. You need to pay the price of discipline so you don't have to pay the price of regret. The bottom line is either way, you got to pay. That's the thing you got to look at. You have to pay. 
So when you're young, guess what? Your friends are out partying, let them party. Show up at 1130, not 9. Don't pre-funk with them. Just show up, ready to roll at 1130. But get the job done. Pay the price. Because guess what? In a year from now, the car is going to be different. You pull up in. A year from in two years, the after party is at your house. Yeah. Right? And all of a sudden, people are in your business. And then the whole thing changes. I, set, I, I jerked the chain in my center of influence. Three quarters of them left as friends, and now guess what? They're all broke and have two kids, and they have track houses, and they have disposable cars. It's just their mind. The job mentality is, is really screwing people. Lastly, this is the thing I just said. Take individual responsibility for your business and your future. It's not your upline's business. It's your business. Right? Your upline's a validation. Your upline's there to help you do three ways. But if your upline's weak, you don't have to be weak, do you? Mm -mm. And by the way, don't ask to go to somebody else's line. That's ridiculous. One, it's unethical. And two, you're, you're exactly where you should be. Mm. Okay? People come to my office all the time. Can I be in your line? I said, I'm no better than your mentor. You go execute your plan. You can sit here, but don't think about signing up underneath me. You're exactly where you should be. Mm. And that's the way it's going to be. You can't have million dollar dreams with a minimum wage work ethic. Right? Can that happen? You see it every day. They go, oh, yeah, I want to make 5000 a month. And they have $50 a month work ethic. It's ridiculous. <laughs> right? Okay, this is powerful. Network marketing statistics. Some of these things you guys have seen already. If not, take a picture of this, Instagram it. Here's all the different, you know, big industries we know of, NFL, music, organic, network marketing, movie, and gaming. Network marketing, 167 billion. I'll get out of the way so you can picture. Look at that. We are double of the next one. So when you guys go out there, right, and, and someone says this, this morning I was a little bit late because I did a broadcast with about 1,000 people in my office. Someone goes, is this one of those pyramid things? I said, are you a wrench puller? <laughs> she goes, why? I said, that's the most ignorant statement I've ever heard. You've been groomed to, to work for somebody else, haven't you, ma'am? I said, let me ask you a question. Why does Target have a 1,000 stores? Because they can't do a billion out of one. <clears throat> why does McDonald's have 10,000 stores all over the world? They can't do 8 billion in one store. Right? The average person's best chance is network marketing. Why? You get 10,000 people pushing verb, you're rich. Beyond your wildest dreams. You can't do a billion out of one brand partner, can you? Mm -mm. So see, the fat cats know how to make the big money, but the average people work for all the fat cats. 99% of all people work for the 1%. It's because the 99% have been groomed to think that everything's a scam. Well, guess what? When you look up and two decades have gone by and you're just as broke as when you left high school, where's the scam? Okay? We're feeding each other to stay broke. That's why when I said when he said, what's the, your goal? I want to teach people, young people in, in college. When we get to high college, we go, I'm a liberal. Whoa. <laughs> you realize that 40% of your money is taxed? Do you want to really give that away? Think about what you're saying. What if we gave the money back to the people and there's more homes, more jobs, more groceries bought? Mm -hmm. Now the economy goes. It's not rocket science. <laughs> All right. So look at this. Women in the industry. Women are coming on strong, guys. These women are starting to dominate, which is exciting. 82% of women in the U.S. who make 100000 a year did it in direct sales. No way. Okay? Look at that. <clears throat> This is some serious stuff. Ladies, you guys can own your own homes, your own cars, run your own lives. You don't need a man to do any of that for you. Word. You are so powerful. <laughs> Dominate. You guys are doing so good. And now you're making the guy step up, which is even better. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's really exciting. Next, home-based business stats. These are, gonna, these are things I got from the DSA and the U.S. Census Bureau. First. Home-based businesses report an 85% success rate compared to a 5% success rate for a traditional small business like retail stores and restaurants. What do you think about that? That's pretty powerful. 
Okay, someone starts a home-based business every 10 seconds. Do you want them in your business or someone else's? Okay, next. The network marketing industry has increased by more than 600,000 per year. How many do you want in your team? See, because today, it's popular to be a network marketer. The baby boomers, parents, the, the world, what they call them the WW2s, they got pounded by Amway. Amway was a good concept, but back in the day, they didn't pay. So they got beat up, and they worked hard, and they got no checks. That's why everyone thought, oh, God, network marketing. Today, there's technology. Look at this. In the U.S., $31 billion in network marketing. Now, remember, the $167 billion, so $31 billion of us in the U.S. Again, shows you how big it is in our country, North America. By 2015, an estimated 50% of households will be in some sort of network marketing business. Perfect timing, right? Perfect storm. <clears throat> Approximately 20% of home-based businesses gross between $100,000 and $500,000 per year. Wow. Subway can't say this. Okay? I looked into Subway. It's $180,000 down. Another hundred and eighty thousand to two hundred thousand financed. After two years, you're making about twenty five hundred dollars a month per franchise, working eighteen hours a day, seven days a week. Because if you don't do it, they'll steal from you. You want that? Okay. <laughs> There's another powerful guy I just, I, that I flew with. The richest people in the world look for and build networks. Everyone else looks for work. Mm. Wow. Again, the one percent is talking to you. In the beginning, I already told you this, right? You're going to work a little. In the end, you're going to work. You're going to work a little and earn a lot. Next, building a network allows you a walkaway business, a job. This is powerful now. A job will always have you chasing a dollar. So don't chase a dollar. Okay. When, and this is the thing I get into. I, I really try to educate people about. Is they go, my my company doesn't care about me. Yeah, they do. You gave them an hour. They gave you a dollar. There's nothing else owed to you. That's it. You exchanged a dollar and an hour. And as long as they treated you as far as they didn't beat you up and they didn't handcuff you, that was the right exchange. So if you don't like that, do something about it. Jim Rohn says go increase your value to the marketplace. So that's pretty much it for me. I want to say thank you so much for allowing me to come here.